Hello, Cassie Brown here. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to make the beautiful Cosmos two different ways. The first way is the all-in-one cutter and then individually wired petals. Hope you enjoy. So today, doing the Cosmos, I am using the all-in-one cutter that I've designed with FMM and I'm also going to be using the Soft Then Strong Clay, which is also by FMM. So we're going to move these lovely cutters away. They're really good. They're the all-in-one cutters for the Cosmos. But first we need to make the stamens. So I'm going to take a 24 gauge wire. And then I've got some white cotton here. Now I'm going to pull some of the white cotton away. And then I'm going to get two fingers slightly apart. And then I'm going to start wrapping the cotton around my fingers. Now we want to do this about 30 times roughly. So we keep doing it all the way. So this is the way I always make the centres of my cosmos. You can use stamens but I just find that the cotton looks better and you'll see why in a moment when we start dusting it and putting the pollen on it as well. So I'm going to guess that maybe that's about 30. I don't tend to count when I'm doing this. I just think when it looks like a nice amount on my finger. And then we take the scissors and cut that away. So now what we have is a lovely circle of cotton. So what we need to do now is twist the cotton, I'm holding it ready, twist the cotton into a figure of eight and then fold it in half. So the middle of your figure of eight is at the bottom here. Now this is where your cotton is going to, your sorry, your wire <laughs> is going to slide through and then bend down. Now we give it a little twist just to hold it in place. And as you can see, I'm not bothered that the one circle has gone slightly smaller than the other one. That's absolutely fine. Now once we've got that, that's in place and it's secure. It's not going to run anywhere. I'm going to get some half width green florist tape. So with this, we stretch to release the glue. I do always put a little bit of corn flour on my fingers. It just helps it to stick to itself rather than you. Now what we need to do is move the cotton up and I'm actually going to start taping on the cotton itself. So right around that joint there and I'm squeezing it to make sure I've stuck the tape down and then we gradually, I'm going to have to cut that little loop off, there we are, get that out of the way. Otherwise I'll start taping it down here and it'll look a bit messy. So now I'm just taping that wire together as we move down. So I'm stretching to release the glue and then I'm twisting with this finger and thumb. And we go all the way down to the bottom, like so. So then we get our scissors. Now a big pair of scissors if you've got them and I'm going through the centre of those loops now. Now I just tend to put the scissors through to make sure there's no loops left. And as you can see, it's all very spiky and all over the place. So we just need to neaten that up. You can use the smaller scissors, just use whatever suits really. So what I'm going to do now, I'm holding it together and I'm going to give it a nice little haircut. Now can you see, I've done one half and there's still a lot sticking up, so I'm going to turn it slightly flatten it again and then keep going. So then I stop, turn it and flatten it again. There we are. See I should have been a hairdresser, I think I'm wasted. <laughs> so we go around like so. There's still a few little bits there so just trim those up if you can. Try and get it nice and flat. I'm not overly panicked about that. There we are. And as you can see, that's nice and flat now. So remove any 
excess cotton because we don't want that getting mixed up into your paste when you're working. And then we need to colour it. So I'm going to bring over a little bit of kitchen roll. And I'm using Aubergine by Edible Art. Now this is just a food dust. So I open it up. As you can see, it's very dark in colour. And then I'm going to just dab this on. So we do this all over, like so. So we're getting this nice and dark. Now you can use col um, coloured cotton. Personally, I just think it's nicer if you colour it up yourself. You can get a good true colour then. And I think sometimes the coloured cotton, can't speak, the coloured cotton um, can be a little bit too harsh with the colour. But as you can see, that's looking good. So once we've done that, always put the lid on your colours, otherwise they're going to go absolutely everywhere. And then I tend to fold that over, so that's not going to go everywhere as well. And then we need to put the pollen on, which is the fun bit. So I've got some dried semolina here, straight from the packet. And what I've done is added a little bit of sunflower yellow food dusts, just a small amount, and then I've mixed it in. And as you can see, it gives you that lovely little gold, that lovely golden colour. So that's all I've done there, mixed it together. And then what I'm going to do on my little dish here, I've already pre-mixed, just show you if you can see it there, I've already pre-mixed a little bit of Tylo powder with some water. So I've got my edible glue. And then we're just going to get the end of our stamen and I'm going to dip it into the glue. So when I turn that upside down, you should be able to see that hopefully. I'm going to put a little bit more on. Best to have too much than not enough. Make sure it's really nice and, and covered with glue. And then all we're going to do is dip into the already coloured semolina. Now if I lift that up, you can see it's stuck beautifully. Now if it comes apart and there's a few that go astray like these two here, I'm really not worried about that. I actually think that that makes it look better, makes it look more realistic. And then what we do, we just put that to one side and let it dry. Now I'm going to bring one over that is dry. As you can see the pollen stays on there lovely. And again there's a few little strands that have gone astray but I'm really not worried about that. I think once it dries, it looks like pollen and it looks really, really good. So I'm just gonna stand that up in a little piece of polystyrene and let that dry. And then we can start having fun making our Cosmos. So I've got the three cutters here and my aim is we've got some white. Now this is straight from the packet. I'm just done. Um, I'm wiping my hands on a little piece of tissue. So this is the white. Now with this particular paste, the soft then strong paste, it's not brilliantly white. So you do need to add a little bit of white to it. It'll dry, I mean it's okay, you can use it straight from the packet, but it will dry a little bit opaque. So I do think that sometimes it's nice just to add this white. Now I don't use paints in it, but you can if you want to because this is a non-edible medium that I'm using, remember. Um, but I do like to use all my edible dusts in there. I don't really like to put paint on them, especially if it's going on a cake or something. So I make a little well, a little kind of bowl, if you like, with my paste, and then just sprinkle a little bit of white. That's too much, so I'm going to sprinkle a little bit back in. And then I fold it over. Now gently press from the bottom. Now if you do like a pasty and press at the top you're going to get a big air bubble there and then when you're mixing it's just going to explode everywhere which is what we don't want. So I'm just going to press that down and then we start mixing it in and you won't see a huge difference but when you dr when it starts drying you really will. It will make a huge difference to the paste. So we just give it a little mix and then I do want to add a little bit of pink. So I'm just undoing the lid. Again, this is pink by Edible Art. So food dust again. And at this time I'm just dabbing it in. So there's lots of different ways to add colour. 
do which one works best for you. But I just thought it'd be nice to do a little pale pink one. And then I'm going to show you how to airbrush them afterwards as well. So again, a little bit more colour. And then we mix nicely. I think a little bit more. So just always add small amounts. And if you do do an amount that's too strong, then take a little bit of that and add it to your bigger amount of white. So we can always control it, it's perfectly fine. There we are. So that's a nice pink that we've got there. As you can see, I'm not using much at all. We really don't need much. Put the lid back on. And then we're ready to go. We'll see you after the break. Hi, like what you see so far? Want to see more exclusive videos? Would you like to know how I get my inspiration? then my Patreon page is for you. Time and time again, I receive so many messages from people who are scared to get their airbrushes out of the box. I know how this feels because I was the same. If this is you, then you need to go to my Patreon site where I give you step-by-step -step tutorials on how to feel more confident using your airbrush. Not only this, but me, Cassie Brown, will be giving you guidance and support, step-by-step -step instructions on how to make beautiful bouquets and arrangements to adore your cakes and other things that you're creating. Patreon is a subscription site where all cake and craft enthusiasts can have their say in the way they learn and what they see on the Patreon site. I'm a sugar craft and airbrushing specialist. I've been to over seven different countries. I love teaching and traveling, and I love sharing my skills with you in airbrushing, sugar flowers, and air drying clays. I'm really excited to be sharing my Patreon page with you. So for more information, please go to my website, cassiebrown.com. Welcome back. Next, I'll show you how to make the all-in-one Cosmos. So I've already coloured some paste. Just going to move that to one side. And the pink here is quite a darker than I wanted. So I'm just going to take some of that and then add to the white that I've got here. About equal. No, I'd say a bit more pink there. And then I'm just going to mix that in like so so we get that nice paler pink we're just softening the color a little bit now out of all of these i'm going to use the small one for you so we'll put these to one side mix it so that it's nice and soft and then we want to make a mexican hat so i roll it into a ball and then squeeze with my one finger there and then i'm going to hold it between my finger and my thumb and squash and we do this all the way around like so and then we have that nice large sort of hat shape now we're going to put that down now use a thin rolling pin if you've got one this is one from my website that I sell and that I've designed because it's um <clears throat> it's a nice metal one and I just like working with it it's um it's cold to the touch and it's um, it's not it's the right shape for me. I don't like the ones that are too fat because you can't get in close to what you're doing. So I'm going in as close as I can and then rolling out. And then I keep picking up and moving as I go. So that's the secret to this, always pick up and move. If you try and roll out all in one go, it'll just get stuck to the surface. So just keep gently picking up and moving. And then we get that nice thin outer edge. So I'm just doing one more little lap around there. Oops. And you can see by using the thinner rolling pin, you can get in quite close around here. So it does make it look much neater. Okay, now always a little bit of cornflour underneath there. And then we get the cutter. Now it's got a hole in the centre. So we're going to put that hole right over the middle. Line it up as best you can and then we press down and give a little wiggle. Now if I lift it up and turn it around you can see it's cut through but I am just going to use my finger let's get rid of the excess first. I'm going to use my finger just to make sure that all the cuts are nice and neat as we work around. And there's lots of cornflour on there but that will soon come off. I really don't mind about that. 
Now once that's done, always put your excess away, don't waste it. It will always go under your little lid there and it'll be absolutely fine. So I've got a foam pad here. So my next job is to push that out. It comes out beautifully. And as you can see, if I turn it upside down, now with the pointed end of my rolling pin, I'm just gonna make more of a center. And can you see, I keep going to the, um, the cornflower here, and then I'm just really pressing against to make it more of a, um, more of a trumpet kind of shape in the middle, as you can see. Now we need to put it in this little hole here, in our little pad, like so. And then I'm using the, the sharper end of the Dresden tool. Again, a little bit of cornflour. And then if I very gently, you can hold it if you wish. I'm going to do these little lines. Now this is the scoring. This is what's going to make it look very realistic. Now these are excellent. If you're in a rush and you want to make lots of these, they are really good. And I just think they, they kind of guaranteed every time. So we keep going round. So these are available on my website and on FMM's website too. And they're called the All-in-One Cosmos Cutter. Now can you see I never try and move the flower. I always move the pad. I just find it a lot easier. The flower is quite delicate and you don't want to really try and tear that. So just gradually move around. And the last one. Like so. Then what I'm going to do, back to my rolling pin and I'm using the rounded end. And I'm going to just gently press down just a little bit. Just to get those those petals really sort of, a bit of movement if you like. So I'm, I'm barely touching them to be honest. But just getting them to do what I want to do a little bit more. Like so. Now I can see there it hasn't cut out fully so I'm just going to that I think that's yeah that's fine we'll get away with that okay so now I bring in my centers and it's already dry and lovely I've got two here so I'll use the one that's completely dry and then what we we'll do we're going to turn him upside down and then put him in between your fingers I just find this is an easier method now I've got a water brush here with just water in it I don't tend to put lots of glue everywhere so a little bit of water just in the center there. And then with your wire, we're gonna push and make sure that pushes through that center piece like so. Now we're gonna move up the wire. And then we're gonna go, can you see how much I'm leaving there? About a centimeter. And then I'm going to turn it upside down and bring that down. Can you see that's already starting to look really good? And if you're mass producing these, you can see it's going to be so much quicker and easier to do than the individual petals. Now what I do like to do is just cut the back piece off here. Now I always use my nail, but if you've got your Dresden tool, you can also just press down with that and get rid of any excess that you've got there. So we're just moving that away like so. So get rid of the excess, clean up that wire a little bit. That's better. And then I'm just going to soften this because it will have a little calyx on the back. So don't panic too much about what it looks like. I really tend to look at the front and see how that's folding up nicely. Now they don't tend to overlap too much. So then what I'm going to do is put that upside down in a little piece of polystyrene and that's going to dry nicely for me. So I bend it like so. If you've got a little wire rack that is even better but I always leave mine like this in a little piece of polystyrene. Now when it's dry, when you come back to it, it's going to look like this. Now because this is the clay, I can touch it. If this was flower paste, obviously I wouldn't be doing this because it would be in pieces by now. 
but you can see it's very sturdy and it dries really well. So I'm going to put that to one side and we're going to come back to colouring that in a moment. But I do, do just want to show you a couple of other things that you can do with this. So if I get the paste and let's mix in all of that. Because I just want to show you some of the uses you can do with this. So if you had lots of cupcakes, for example, and you wanted to make um, lots of Cosmos to go on the cupcakes, this is perfect for that. So it's almost the same technique. I'm going to roll out, but this time, can you see, I'm rolling out without that Mexican hat. So it's just a flat shape. Now when I roll out, I do always use that tab just so that I've got something to pick up. I don't work very well with the palette knives that slide under. I tend to make an awful mess <laughs> when I'm doing that. So. I tend to do this method. It works for me, but work um, use what works best for you. There we are. So once we've got that, corn flour again. Now this time we'll use the bigger one. Press down again, give a little wiggle, and it cuts out. Again, I always go over with my fingers. This just makes sure that it gets all that lovely detail in as we're working. Now, because this is air drying clay, don't forget you can use this on cards as well. If you're posting cards out and making them, there's so many different uses for it. So you can see the Mexican hats missing. I'm just gonna gently pop those out. There it is. And then we bring the pad over, dropped it. Didn't wanna do that. There we are. And then we just pop him on there. Now lots of corn flour this time. And then we're gonna use our tool, our Dresden tool again, to do those lines. Oops. So, and you can see by doing this, it really does add a lot of detail. I think it looks super. So we keep going. And you can see this is really quick. If you've got lots of these to put on a cupcake, I think they'd look amazing and really quite quick and easy too. So we just do this around the edges. And then I'm going to introduce you to the ones I've done previously. There's a good selection here. So this is just an apple tray that I'm using. And so I would get my wet flour and just sit it in my apple tray. And as you can see, I've got all the different sizes and shapes here. And then if I pull this one out, that's what it looks like when it's dry. And I've actually stacked them up here. If I lift this one out. I've got all three of them stacked on top of each other. I haven't done my centre yet, but I think that would also look lovely on a card or for an embellishment, or also on your cakes, on your cupcakes. So I will just show you how to make the centre. So I've got my paste here ready to go. And then just a small amount we need. And I can't remember which, oh, this one's the dry one. A little ball of paste, a little bit of water on there. We pop that on like so. Now you could leave it like that. I have colored this paste with aubergine but you can brush it with water and then sprinkle over the semolina. Now when that's dry, take off the excess and you'll end up with a beautiful little flower like this. And we're gonna show you how to airbrush those very shortly. We'll see you after the break.
Welcome back. Next I'll show you how to make the wired Cosmos. So next I'll be showing you the wired Cosmos, um, which I just think would be really nice for you to know if you're doing any competition work or bridal bouquets. So as you can see, my equipment's changed slightly. I have a rose cutter. I have the pinking shears, which have a serrated edge. And I've also got a little veiner that I've made myself from the real flower, which is a lovely little thing. So we're first gonna start by getting our, our wires. Now I'm using a 30 gauge wire for this and I'm going to cut my wire into either three or four. Now you do need eight petals all together. Let's cut these a bit smaller. So I have pre-made a few of these just to speed things up a little bit. So this is the white paste that I've got here. Just mix it, get it nice and soft. And I roll into a sausage. Now you can use all this paste and I tend to cut out several at a time. So I squash down my sausage like so and then I'm using my rolling pin and I just gently press down and roll out. Just pick up make sure it's not sticking and then press down and roll out again. Now you can see I've got a nice ridge in the centre there. Now you haven't got to do it this method, you make your ridges how you normally would. But I just personally get on much better with this particular method. So then what I do is start focusing just on this one area. So I'm not bothered about any of that out there. Just this one section. So make sure your pin is clean, otherwise that will happen, that little tear. So really press down, roll out get that really nice and thin. You can just about see the green coming through, which is ideal. So carefully lift it, because we don't want to tear it. A little bit of corn flour. And then this is a cutter that I'm using. I'm just having a look if it's got a size on it. Size three, I think that says, in the big set of cutters that you can get. So I'm just popping that over, pressing down, give a little wiggle. So this is just a rose petal that I'm using, it's nothing fancy. Now go around the edge, make sure that's nice and clean and that's your first petal. Now while I've got a few here I'm just gonna show you how to use the rest of your paste. So this is how I would mass produce really and make lots of petals all in one go. This is my normal method. Make sure that paste doesn't stick Otherwise you'll end up getting all sticky and messy. So keep rolling. And then again with the cutter. We need that ridge to go about halfway. Press down and we give a little wiggle. And that's cut out too. Now you can see the difference because I didn't add the corn flour underneath. It does like to stick to the board. So be aware of that. And to be honest, I don't really need another one. I could have easily got another petal out of there. But because I've already done my prep and got these all ready to go, I don't want to spend too long showing you the same thing. So we get our wires. Now to put our wires in, again, corn flour. I use a lot of corn flour. And I'm going to hold it against my finger and my thumb. Now I'm going to get the wire and I'm gently pushing in. Now as I push the wire in, I'm squeezing with my finger and my thumb so I can feel it going in. And it goes just under halfway, or just about halfway is fine. And we do this with both of them. If I was doing this normally, I'd probably make four petals at a time and keep going just by making the four. We need eight petals all together when we're making this one. There we are. Now we come to my pre-made vein which is lovely, it's from a big cosmos. So we dab with corn flour, then we hold over the veiner and press down. Now really press nice and firmly to get those veins. As you can see, they come through absolutely beautiful. 
and the same with the next one. You should use this part of your hand really because you have more strength by doing this and you don't damage your fingers. There we are, perfect. So now we've got those, just move that corn flour or rub it in a little bit. We're using these oops, scissors, these are the pinking shears, really good, they've got that nice serrated edge. So all I'm going to do now is chop just the ends off like so. You can see I'm not chopping too much off. I tend to say two or three little mountains if you like, that is the ideal amount. So about that much. Now don't go too crazy on this, don't cut too much away, but I think that is perfect, that's ideal. Now we put them on our foam pad and we soften the edges. So again with a ball tool or the end of your rolling pin like me, we just press down just to gently soften the edges. I do go across the top as well and then gently around again. Now if you want to add more detail to that, if the vein hasn't worked very well, I mean that's come up lovely and I'm more than happy with that, but you can just get your Dresden tool at this point and just draw some more lines in there. They do have very strong lines, but not all over. So it is quite random if you can. Just draw those lines in, like so. Now I give a little pinch at the bottom, so right at the bottom here, nice little pinch and leave to dry. And we do the same with this one. And again, we just leave them to dry. So I'm going to put that to one side and I've already got all of my petals here ready to be wired up. So next I'm going to jump and show you how to do the calyx and then I'm going to come back because I want to airbrush these so I want to show you different ways of airbrushing which I'm going to do in the last little section of the video. So let's move on and do our calyxes. So I'm going to bring over the all-in-one that I've done. Oh and I forgot to mention that the the centre is exactly the same method so I, I'm not teaching you anything different here it's just the petals really that are slightly different and you can see I speed things up by doing the all-in-one as well so I'm going to come to my colour now this is Squire's Kitchen Holly Ivy which is one of my favourite greens I do use it quite a lot and I'm going to get my paste and we're going to colour it like so. Now I am going to show you how to airbrush in a moment. Don't worry if you haven't got an airbrush, you would just dust exactly the same way as I'm airbrushing if that makes sense. So with your preferred colour and just dust. But I will explain it as I'm colouring with the airbrush. So you can see that's a lovely green. Always put the lid on and pop him out of the way. Now I'm just going to take about a pea size shape and we roll into a ball and then all I'm going to do is simply push the ball into the bottom of my wire and then I push up. Now what we're going to do is just add a little bit of water. You can use glue if you prefer but I do like my water. It does the job perfectly fine. Now this is where you may have too much paste, which I think I have to be honest. So I'm just pushing that in. Yes, I have got too much paste. So then I'm going to take away some paste. Can you see I've taken away quite a bit there, almost half actually. But then we can neaten that up now and, and cup it. Can you see that? Now it's not perfect because flowers aren't perfect. I think if you stride too hard to make the perfect flower, you do end up getting a little bit unstuck. So just be aware of that. Now to get the nice indentations on that Kalex cutter, I am very simply going back to the all-in-one cutter and I am using the serrated edge and I'm just pressing in. And hopefully you can see that it makes that lovely pattern. So I'm just pressing just using that one edge 
and I'm pressing all the way around, like so. And that gives it a lovely serrated edge. Make sure it goes all the way around and that's your calyx. So you would do exactly the same for the wired one, which we're going to show you in a moment. We'll see you after the break. Hi, my name's Paul Bradford and welcome to module two, sugar paste fondant techniques. So the first thing you learn on module two is all about the sugar paste fondants, the good things, the bad things, and what to look out for to create absolutely fantastic cakes. So then we take on to the next stage and that's how to colour up your sugar paste stroke fondant. And then after that I'm going to take you on to how to paint on sugar paste, how to create a beautiful little yellow daisy with some leaves. And then we're going to move on to how to make a sugar rose. Now sugar roses are the classic rose on any wedding cake, birthday cake, celebration cake. You're going to love how easy it is to make these beautiful roses. I'm then going to show you how to make very, very simple punched flowers and punched leaves before then we move on to the actual cake itself. And within the cake, I'm going to show you different techniques, how to make swags, how to make ruffles, how to do a fabric effect, and then to finish it off, I'm going to show you how to make a fabric bow. As you can see, module two is absolutely full of great techniques for any budding cake designer. So come on, let's get started. Welcome back. Next I'm going to show you how to colour your Cosmos. So next we're going to show you a little bit of airbrushing. So the airbrush that I'm using is the Sparmax and it's one that I can adjust here to make thinner lines or thicker. But I've got this right open because I want to, to give a nice gentle spray over my work that I'm doing. So different colours that you can use. I've just got a nice pink here and we're just going to put a couple of drops in there. So it goes into the colour well. Now if you've never used an airbrush before, I'll quickly give you a demonstration. When you come down close, you pull the, you press down, sorry, this is a dual action. So I'm pressing down for the air and then back for the colour. And I get that nice fine line. Now because I'm spraying this and I want a haze, I'm going to be coming a little bit higher and I'm going to be getting this kind of spray. So that's what I'm looking for. So on a piece of paper, just practice that. If you're too close, you'll get your line. Come up a little bit more and you'll get that haze. Now, if you come up and you pull back too much, you'll get a mess. So be aware of that. You don't want to pull the trigger back too much. So I'm just gonna move that piece of paper out of the way. And then I'll show you how to airbrush these. So you can airbrush these before you put them together. If they were sugar, then I would. But because these are porcelain, the polymer clays, what I'm gonna do is aim to the center, right in there, that's where I'm aiming. So we hold it in that direction. I press down for the air, back for the color. And then I start, can you see, start shading that gradually. Now I work my way round. And can you see the difference? If I bring one in that's just plain, you can see that makes a huge difference very, very quickly. So that's one way of doing it, just spraying the inside of the petals. But that's finished. You've got a complete um, cosmos there. So that's really quick and easy. Another way of doing it is what I call kissing the edges. So we just touch the edges of the, the flower. So to do this, I'm holding it down. I actually start over here on the paper and then I kind of walk into the spray just to touch those end petals and then we move it round so always just walking in and then we can have a look at that and that's just a different way of colouring is touching the edges I call this kissing kiss the edges of each petal so the all-in-one flowers are very very quick and easy to do. I do want to show you how to do the little ones that we put without the wires. So again I'm going to use the same colour just because 
those few drops go a long way and I've still got a lot of colour in there. Um, just wondering whether I should mix it. We can actually. Shall we put a couple of drops of yellow, two drops of yellow and two drops of pink. Let's see what that looks like. Now we hold our finger to the end, pull back the trigger and you see how it all bubbles up inside there. And then we're getting a kind of, kind of orangey colour. So then I'm going to, uh, you need to hold this down because, can you see, it'll just blow away. So just hold it gently and just round the centre, I'm giving this a nice glow of colour. You can go up in each petal if you prefer, like I am doing. But can you see, this is just different ways of, of colouring this. There we are. I think that looks lovely as it is. And then I'll show you just doing around the edges. Let's get a really large one actually and show you the edges. So I'm, I'm flattening it out a little bit. So if this was flower paste you were using, then as you've cut it out and veined it, you would then airbrush it before you put it in your little thing to dry. So it just makes it much easier. So what I'm doing now is just what I call kissing the edges. So most of the colour, as you can see, is going on the paper, but I am making that, that edge quite dark as I move around. And we do this round all the edges and the last one. So you can see they look very, very different but it, they both look beautiful at the same time. There's no right or wrong way of doing this at all. So I'm gonna put those to one side. I'm gonna turn the paper over because now I'm gonna show you just how to color the wired ones that we've done. And then I'll show you how to wire that up. So I'm gonna get rid of all the color by spraying it into a cleaning jar. So it all goes in there until there's nothing left. I thought it might be quite nice to have orange so I'm going to use orange a couple of drops now test to make sure orange is coming out which it is I might actually water that down with a little bit of yellow because it does look quite strong there there we are so that's a little bit pale as you can see so we bring our flowers over and I like to just kiss the bottoms here just there that's all I'm going to be doing with all of these. You can do back and front if you wish. So I'm bringing each one over. So one, two, three, to count how many I've got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you need eight altogether, so that's just perfect like so. So that's eight done. I've got a few extra just in case of breakages. So I've only done the, the front of the petals. You can do the back as well. It's, it's entirely up to you. But I, it's really important that I show you how to wire these together. I am trying to cram quite a lot into this demonstration so hopefully you're keeping up. I'm sorry that I'm sort of fleeting from one to another but I just want to make sure you get everything. Now I've already made some centers. I tend to make a lot in one go and then put them to one side because they're ready for you then. So I'm going to pick the largest one which is probably that one because I do do these all different sizes. Now what we're going to do is get our get our petal and bend it right close to the paste there. The closer it is the better. You need to do that with all of them. So let's just spend a minute doing this. Now this is really important. When I've done competition work and judged, it's such a shame that you spend hours making a stunning flower, but then if you don't get this really tight, so if you do it there instead and then attach it, it just ruins the whole flower and it's such a shame. So always make sure that is really nice and tight at the back there. And then what I'm gonna do, so you can see where my tape ends and where my coloration starts that's where I'm going to introduce my first petal. But I'm going to put, I'm going to say 
maybe three. Now I don't have a set order of this. Sometimes I do three, sometimes I'll do four. It depends what mood I'm in really. And I've studied the cosmos and they do have all different numbers so I'm not too panicked. Just make sure they're lined up with that tape and then I'm going to stretch to release that glue and start wrapping around. Now they will move, don't worry about that at all. So I think on this occasion I'm going to put four in the centre and then I'm going to fold them up a little bit. Okay. Now we tape around, make sure they're all secure and you can't see any wire at the top here, that's really important. And then we can start adding the others in between each one. So they don't overlap like a rose you would have an overlap like this and, and you'd carry on going round. With these they tend to have petals in the middle and then petals behind. And what is fascinating with the cosmos is that as it's growing, as it's opening its bud if you like, the flower still grows. So you could have a tiny flower like this that will end up this size, which I think is lovely. And that's why it's good to do the mixture of the flowers, I think. So I'm keeping that really tight at the back. Now, if you're more comfortable, you can tape four at a time and go all the way down with your tape. I just prefer doing it this particular method. So there's no right or wrong way of doing this, really. And then, as you can see, I'm gradually moving down. So you can't see any of my wires at all there. I've made that really, really tight. Stretch to release that glue. And then we gradually come down, like so. And then we can have a look at it and see what needs doing. Come all the way down so that there's no wires covering. And then we need to just tinker now. So we're just moving them out. until we're happy with how that looks. Now you can see it's much bigger than the bigger all-in-one cutter, but it depends what you're doing. If you're doing competition work, do the wired ones. If you're mass producing and you've got a lot to do, or if you're a total beginner and you've never put anything on wires before, then these all-in-one cutters are absolutely perfect for that. So I have got this flower also in my book, The Q Book of Sugar Flowers. But there we are. I think they look beautiful. You would also put the calyx on exactly the same way. And then we can just put a, an arrangement of those together. I've got a white one there that I haven't coloured, an all-in-one. But I think they look stunning in a nice little vase, just doing their own thing, gently waving at you. Beautiful. I hope you've enjoyed learning about how to make the cosmos in two different ways. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.